What's good, YouTube? It's Mirror Voice Cody back again with another video. Uh, we just got back from YCS Pasadena, which we scrubbed out, sadly, but I thought I'd make some more tier videos so you guys don't end up like me and actually do well in your tournaments. So without further ado, let's just dive into some uh, hot tips that you should know about the Shizu Tournaments deck if you are playing it. First and foremost, um, this one does come up a lot in convoluted game states where let's say you have like a board, uh, you have a shuffler in your graveyard and you're just tapping the mill a name and you want to activate your name. Your opponent, of course, doesn't want you to do that. So they respond with the activation of a bestial in their hand, targeting the name. So in this case, you have a couple of options. Like obviously, um, shuffling the, the bestial, it targets the monster and then it does actually have to um, banish that target in order to be summoned. So it says that you can target one lighter dark monster in either place graveyard, banish it. And if you do, special summon this card. So we can actually use the shuffler to shuffle back the target and then their bestial will stay in their hand. Now this is kind of like, it's 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 really difficult to assess like whether you should be doing it or not. It all comes down to a lot of the times it's like the tempo of the game. Um, do you have enough tempo to kill them or take control where your opponent basically loses the game on your following turn? Uh, if the answer is yes, a lot of times you should just chain that shuffler in your graveyard to target the tier name that they targeted so the bestial does stay in their hand. Um, for example, let's say like right now it's my opponent's turn. They only have two cards in their hand. I have a board and we're just like, okay, if we let them get the beast on the board, it's another body for them to actually make a possible play. Um, for example, if they have like change of heart or tactics or whatever, and then they're just able to make dark or even like uh, if they have two um, names, bestial names, they could make Beatrice, for example, if Drago Stapila wasn't here. So in that case, like, yeah, they're down resources. We don't want them to like mount any sort of comeback. We don't want them to have a, a body on board. We just want them to have that one card dead in their hand and then the other card live. And we just have like enough cards to take care of it. Then sure, we can just activate the shuffler to shuffle back the name. But there are other game states where, let's say they just do it and you don't really have a board. Let's say you just like, for example, have one Rhino Heart, you summon, they chain the beast deal, and we're just like, okay, we're going to shuffle it back. That's a really terrible position to put yourself in because the beast deals are still live on their following turn. Like my opponent's still going to have that on their following turn, for example, or my following turn, um, if they're able to uh, live past that turn. So it doesn't really make sense to get rid of a shuffler and allow them to keep the beast deal in hand because in that case, it's essentially a minus two given that we get rid of our shuffler, which is a neg one, and then they still have the beast deal, which is a body and it gets rid of one of your names on the following turn. So that's just not very good. So a lot of times I see like uh, near players getting in the trap where they're just like, okay, I don't want them to summon it and I'm just gonna shuffle it back and then they keep the beast deal in hand. But a lot of times that can actually be bad for you because they still have the beast deal on the following turn. So it's really like assessing if you're able to take control of the game. And uh, if you're already ahead in tempo and you don't want them to mount the comeback, for example, then maybe it is better to shuffle back the name. But bear in mind, when you do get rid of this, you're actually not able to use it on one of their names because they are using it, you're using it on the beast deal instead. So just little things to keep note of in your head you really have to assess the board state it's really hard to say like when you should or shouldn't be doing it i would say for the most part try not to do this when the board state is like not a given so for example when you're not sure that you're already in a controlling position probably best to just let them summon the beast still banish the name and then you just keep grinding um see how you can get rid of that body uh but it doesn't really stop your plays on the following turn and you get to keep the shuffler in your grave which is a lot more high impact uh, for your opponents especially during your opponent's turn because we are trying to stop the names as well as shuffle back their graveyard as opposed to you know burning this and them having the beast steal and then they're free to make the rest of their tier plays so fun thing to note also that does come into hand um in the same vein, that does come in a, uh, up in situations where you have the beast deal as well. And let's say they have a monster on the board, they try to beast deal, and then you chain your beast deal. That one's a lot more forgiving uh, compared to the shuffler because you're just wasting the beast deal in hand, but you just get a body as well. So typically on your turn, a lot of times it is a lot better to do that just because you do have the extra body to make plays as well as put damage on board. But on your opponent's turn, you may want to consider holding your beast deal. Instead of chaining to their beast deal, you might want to hold this for their name as opposed to stuffing their beast deal in their hand because of the fact that obviously stopping their names is how you win. And this is like different than the shufflers because you're not wasting any cards. Uh, you're just keeping like this body uh, on board as well. So... Yeah, a quick little tip there to keep track of.
Okay, tip number two, this is something that you should generally not do uh, into the tier mirror or blind in general, but let's say I have Merlin in my hand, I normal summon it, and then I mill three cards. I hit a tier name plus a Rhino Heart. Now, it seems obvious, like off the top of your head, you're just like, okay, I'm going to use both of these effects because I have cards to discard, but this can be a real trap that... Uh, essentially plays right into Kelbeck, which is not good. So if we go to Sharon, Chain Link 1, Rhino Heart, Chain Link 2, let's say we're going to discard, um, for example, and then we just fuse like this. So we make Kick Kalos, and then we go Chain Link 1, Kick Kalos, Chain Link 2, Rhino Heart. This is kind of a trap because if your opponent has Kelbeck, they're able to use it in the window because of the fact that you discarded from your hand for Rhino Heart Summon. So then your Kick Kalos essentially just gets burned off for free, which is not really ideal. They get like the maximum value out of their Kelbeck, which is essentially to spin back your kit. So when you have Rhino Heart in Graveyard plus a name, generally it's better to not use a Rhino Heart unless like certain scenarios, maybe you just wanna, like it doesn't really matter. And you're, you're maybe like if you have a hand where you're forced to make Dweller using the Rhino Heart or otherwise you lose, maybe then you just take the risk because you have to put the body on board for Dweller, for example. But generally, when you mill Rhino Heart and a name, try not to use the Rhino Heart. Try to use one or the other. So either the name or the Rhino Heart and then make Kick Kalos because of the fact that if you do it on the same chain, Kelbeck's timing window will recognize that you just discarded for Rhino Heart. So then it would be able to bounce the Kit Kalos. So yeah, just a quick little tip there on that. Okay, tip number three is playing around Happiness. Happiness is a really oppressive card in the mirror match that can basically lose you the game on the spot if you're not careful enough and you play right into it. This is essentially a hand trap that puts a body on board at least or multiple bodies if they're able to mill, you know, significant copies of tiers, or even like shufflers. It could be like a plus, you know, plus three or plus four if they happen to hit a bunch of cards. So it's really, really devastating. Obviously in the mirror match, we want to play around it, but having this effect is when your opponent activates monster effect on the field, quick effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. So it's a when effect, not an if. It does have to, uh, it's a when trigger effect. So it does have to chain directly to the uh, monster effect on the field. So you are able to either chain block it uh, in a way that prioritizes you to get protection. And by protection, I mean the shufflers, because if we can get the shufflers in the graveyard, then the opponent's not really gonna get a lot of value of, out of their mills, right? We have that base sort of covered with happiness. So that's pretty much like one of the first things that you should be thinking of when you do have, uh, like you go first and you open a hand like this. I see some players, they get really excited and they, let's say they just summon Rhino Heart and use the effect, then the happiness could be chained and they could potentially end the game on the spot. Let's say they mill like two tier names and a shuffler. They make Kit Kalos, add a bunch of stuff, they have a shuffler in grave, and now you're just like, oops, well now my turn is kind of shut down and I, I guess I lose. Whereas uh, you should just be using Shirin here first because of the fact that it guarantees uh, you having a chance to mill the shufflers. And you could even go further to uh, play the Scream just so you have that fallback in case the first three mills off of Shiren doesn't mill in a Shizu, we can just use Scream after that to try and hit those names. So again, try and play safe here. We can go ahead and use Shiren's effect, Dump Happiness. And now because this doesn't activate on the field, when you mill three cards, you're safe. And furthermore, if, for example, we decide not to use Scream here and we just Fuse, it actually protects your uh, Kit Kalos as well because you're able to chain block in a way that allows Scream to be chain link two, so it does not get happiness. So obviously some Kit Kalos here, we can go chain link one, Kit Kalos, chain link two, Scream, and they still can't use the happiness because again, it has to chain directly to the monster effect that's activating on the board. And because Scream is chain link two, they're not able to respond, they lose timing on that. So we are able to mill, you know, some cards. Obviously if you don't have the shuffler, that's unfortunate. But again, you give yourself a really good chance because you are milling cards before activating effects. So this obviously makes it a lot more safe for you to do your plays before uh, playing into Havnus. So definitely make sure to play your hand in a way that you use monster effects after you have shufflers or try to get shufflers first. 
Okay, tip number four. Let's say you have three shufflers in your grave and one bestial in your hand. Your opponent just milled three cards and now they're using the effect of a tear to try and fuse. Which one should you respond with? The shuffler in the grave or the bestial in your hand? It's more of a trap, I would say, that obviously the bestial in your hand jumps to your mind at the first uh, glance because of the fact that obviously this only hits one card, whereas the shufflers can have more value by being able to shuffle up to three targets. And you get to put a body on board, which is nice as well. But this falls into the trap because, again, these cards can shuffle three cards in your graveyard, but so can your opponents. They also play these cards in their deck. So if we were to use the Beastial effect now to banish the Merly, we're already, all of our cards are exposed. These cards in the graveyard are already exposed. They're not protected. Whereas this card in your hand is pretty much protected from anything, save for like a triple tactics talent out of the ordinary. So these cards are vulnerable. If you mag them at here, then these three cards are super susceptible to your opponent's shuffler. So if your opponent baits your bestial here and is able to put a shuffler of their own in their grave, they're able to just banish that to shuffle back all three of your names immediately. So I would argue that obviously it depends on the game state again, but generally in this game state like this, it's probably just better to use one of the effects from your grave so that you keep your bestial in your hand because again it's not knowledge it's not public knowledge they don't know it it's also not exposed so they can't shuffle it back and essentially like being able to use this it guarantees that we are able to use one of the cards in our graveyard which are not protected by any means so obviously i want to burn one of these first to guarantee that i get to shuffle before my opponent gets a shuffler in the graveyard to shuffle these back to invalidate them essentially because they only need one shuffler to get rid of all three it's like a one for two um because they get rid of both names so that also gives you you know it puts you in a better game spot because you're guaranteed to use one of these shufflers and then you also have the beast deal which is hidden knowledge in your hand so they might make a push on that turn and hope that you don't have a beast deal and then you just hit them with the beast deal so again it's for the most part, a lot better to hold this and just use the cards that are exposed in your graveyard, I would say. It might be a little different if you do have four shufflers in your graveyard because then you don't care as much. But even still, I think it's probably just better to use these because they're always exposed in the graveyard and it's just better to get rid of them because they're not protected. And they're just like it's better to get the most value out of them as soon as you can. And then the last tip I have for today is if you do happen to play Herald of Orange Light, I see a lot of players burning this on like a name in Graveyard, for example, when you go second. Um, I don't think that's generally correct unless your opponent is going off so hard that you, you're forced to use Herald of Orange Light for something super high impact. For example, maybe like a Magnemut that they're trying to make Beatrice with. Maybe you're just forced to use Herald. But I think that you can make an argument to actually hold this for the Abyss Dweller on your turn. So if your opponent's going like Normal Summon Rhino Heart, instead of uh, immediately going to Herald, maybe you can just wait until they do their full combo, given that, you know, it's not too crazy. Because sometimes you're forced to do it if they're going to make like Beatrice and make this huge board where the Dweller doesn't matter as much because of the fact that they already have the board, so you're still losing. But generally, like, I think it's good to keep in the back of your head. Maybe a lot of times you can't actually hold this four after their full combo so they make the abyss dweller and then on your turn you can draw your six card and when they go to dweller you you can actually go ahead and herald that because when dweller this is like one of the biggest cards in the mirror match that controls the entire game because it shuts off your entire graveyard which includes your three names plus any shuffler effects that you could use to protect yourself from your opponent's tier names so it essentially shuts down like you know a good chunk of your deck the most um crucial part of the deck that we need to win so if we can stop abyss dweller that means we're able to do everything else and oftentimes more often than not being the turn player you are able to push past all of your opponent's cards so i would make an argument if you can to hold herald of the orange light for abyss dweller um, in a regular game state but obviously keep it in the back of your head as well that if they're doing crazy stuff like magnumut it's just so much value that you're forced to herald and pray so uh yeah just keep that in mind but this is just something that i was thinking of uh it did come up like once or twice i think at the ycs where it actually worked but uh definitely experiment and let me know how you feel about this this is like back in the day i remember like people used to hold maxi as well for the second uh 
uh, Agent of Venus activation. So they're forced to commit both Shine Balls and then they just lose their resources. So it's kind of like... Um, Kind of like that, and it's kind of like a mind game. You know, you're holding this for the high impact card uh, and not just discarding it immediately because to negate the first monster effect that happens in the game. That's about it for the tips today. I'll make some more. If you guys have any other Ishizu tips, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Let me know what I missed, and let me know if you guys have any thoughts. Like this comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Deuces.